Hi viewers, in this class we are going to discuss the communication that is animal communication. Apart from the animal behavior, there is a topic called communication. Under this topic, we discuss introduction to the topic, definition of the animal communication, signal production, signal transmission, signal reception, costs and benefits of communication and evolution of signals. Let us start with the definition. <coughs> animal communication is a process by which one animal provides information that the other animals can incorporate into their decision making. The vehicle for the provision of the information is called as a signal. The signal may be a sound, color pattern, posture, movement, electrical discharge, touch, release of an odorant or some combinations of all these mediums. Animals face daily decisions about how to behave. Choices can be as simple as a sea anemone deciding when to expand its tentacle or as complex as a male lion deciding whether to approach a reluctant mate. Communication is an important source of additional information that is incorporated into the decision making process. Usually the animal which provides a signal otherwise signal providing animal is a sender whereas the animal to which the signal is directed is known as a receiver. Receiver uses a signal for decision making. Here it is a sender which sends a signal otherwise information and it receives the information it is a receiver. The association between alternative signals and alternative circumstances is called as a code. Signal codes are acquired by animals by different mechanisms. Some codes are generally inherited and non-social animals require 5 to 6 signals and whereas the social animals they require 10 to 20 signals and the social vertebrates require 30 to 40 signals and most animals produce signals to attract the mates and they produce additional signals to synchronize the process of mating. Signals for conflict, aggressive intention and submission are widespread. Territorial species require signals for declaring territorial or territory ownership. Social animals may use signals to coordinate group movements. Usually bats, oil birds, porpoises, electric fish use the differences in between emitted and received signals to know about the ambient environment. Here the, in the image we are looking wolves are the social animals they require large repertoire of signals to communicate among themselves. And coming to the signal production the challenge faced by a sender is the creation of a controlled perturbance of the environment that can be detected and recognized by a receiver. Here there are different modalities of the signals. Usually the signals may be in the form of sound, light, smell, touch and electric in nature. These all are the modalities of signals. If you come to the sound, sound travels in the form of waves and thus any sound can characterize by its component frequencies and the physical size of each wave component that is called as the wavelength. 
wavelength depend upon wavelength of a sound depend upon frequency and the speed of the sound in the propagation medium the speed of sound is greatest in solids intermediate in water and least in air a given frequency of sound in water has a wavelength 4.5 times longer than the same frequency of air and the same frequency in a solid can be up to 50 times longer than that in air small animals they tend to communicate with high frequency sounds and only large animals use low frequency sound signals aquatic animals acquire higher frequency signals than do similarly sized terrestrial animals the lowest frequencies the small insects frogs and birds can produce as signals may be many thousands of waves per second animal muscles cannot reach this quickly which makes sound production challenging one solution is to use frequency multiplication for example if you uh, see the catidids frogs bats and holer monkeys they have the resonating structures of the sound the hard bodied animals drag a comb like structure over a sharp edge a single muscle contraction causes the sharp edge to hit successive teeth in the comb thereby producing a sequence of sound waves sequence of sound waves they are called as a stridulation or stridulation see here there is a cactus wren that sing a uh, the sings to communicate with its species members and here the catidids use stridulation process what is the stridulation is a single muscle contraction causes the sharp edge to hit successive teeth in the comb thereby producing a sequence of sound waves this is called as a stridulation arthropods all have the exoskeleton and by mounting the comb on one external body part and the sharp edge on the other they can stridulate by rubbing the two hard parts together for example lobsters rub an antenna against the head and beetles rub a leg against the body and the crickets catidids rub one wing over the another there are uh, other techniques for frequency multiplication for example terrestrial vertebrates use muscles to force uh, forced air into the into and out of their lungs while breathing if thin membranes are inserted into this air for air flow the membranes will flutter producing sound waves at much higher frequencies than the air flow cycle this is how frogs croak lions roar and birds sing so dendrobates azureus can communicate through the sound production and bats utilize special resonating structures in order to enhance the sound so that is the animals such as catidids frogs bats and holer monkeys have the specialized resonating structures attached to their sound producing organs that select the radiated frequency frequencies and couple the sounds to the medium and the second modality is a light light is an another modality used for producing signals most visible signals relay on the presence of ambient light that is generated by the sun similar to sound light propagates as waves when white light which contains many different light frequencies strikes an object some of it is reflected and is this reflected light that creates a visible image of the object birds lizards and some insects can see light frequencies well into the short waved ultraviolet humans cannot see these short waves 
Thus, in humans, objects that appear to be similar or un uncolored may be seen as different or highly colored by a bird or a honeybee. The challenge for a sender is to produce a visible image that is detectable against the background by a receiver. One way to do this is to move the signal body part in front of a static background. Otherwise, another major way to catch a receiver's visible attention is by increasing the contrast between a signal body part and the background. Here the uh, different birds, lizards and some insects, they can see the light frequencies which are in ultraviolet and these are the another examples like the hummingbird and the butterflies. Another major the here the colors other than black and white are more difficult to produce although animals cannot synthesize carotenoid pigments they can sequester the pigments by eating certain plant parts or by eating other animals that ingest those plants. Carotenoids are relatively stable compounds generating colors in the yellow to red orange. There are few natural pigments that are blue or green that animals uh, can utilize for the coloration. And the color reflected depend on the size and spacing of the matrix. This mechanism is responsible for producing the blue and green feathers of jay parrots and blue skin on the heads of the turkeys and male mandrills, blue eyes in humans and even snow leopards. The apparent color can change as the sender shifts its position relative to the receiver. These are the iridescent colors seen in many hummingbirds and the butterflies. There is a, a little ambient light animal may have to produce its own light that is bioluminescence. This ability has evolved in fireflies, astrocode crustaceans that is a muzzle shrimps, deep sea squid and marron fish all of which produce their own light chemically or harbor luminescent symbionts that can produce light for them. In the bioluminescence those organisms which exhibit bioluminescence, they have a, an important protein which is called as a luciferin that oxidizes under the catalytic activity of the luciferase enzyme that results in the formation of the cold light. This emission of light uh, by the individual animal that is known as the bioluminescence. So it is a firefly, Odentocilis inopla. And the third major modality used by most animals with the exception of many birds is olfactory signaling. Senders deposit or release chemicals called as pheromones that receivers later detect by smell or taste. Ants are prolific users of chemical communication. Their small bodies uh, contain up to a dozen separate glands each producing a different chemical compound or mixture of compounds that serves a different social function. Ants use chemical signals to mark their foraging trails, to recruit group members for defense against invaders, to attract mates, to regulate development of different worker castes, to solicit food and to distinguish colony members from non-members. Many mammalian species employ chemical communication for important social functions such as mate attraction, synchronization of mating, and territory defense. Mammalian glands often produce specialized chemical products, but some species mix various natural body products into a pouch and let bacteria do the work of producing the final pheromone product. The Potential for signal diversity is extremely high in chemical communication. Animals often limited the, limit the volatility or solubility of pheromones by embedding them in an inert carrier compound that release odorant slowly. 
this technique is particularly useful for territorial defense the best example is desert iguanas carry this one step further by using a carrier that is not really release water and until another lizard flicks the carrier with its wet tongue the small packets of deposited pheromone absorb ultraviolet light and this appear as black specks to animal that can see in the ultraviolet spectrum such as iguanas iguanas approach the specks and taste them thereby releasing the pheromones other animals accelerate the dispersal of relatively non volatile scents by spreading them over a tuft of fine hairs actively spraying them into a medium or releasing them into strongly flowing wind or water currents and thereby spread and coming to the fourth modality is the touch sense tactile signals involve special patterns of touching generating persistent eddies in a medium or the transmission of vibrations through a substrate touches during aggressive encounters may provide information about the body size strength of opponents here the tactile signal involves special patterns of touching generating the persistent eddies in a medium and here we are also seeing the substrate born vibrations in the spider arthropods make wide use of tactile eddy and substrate signals for example aquatic copepods aquatic copepods can identify the distinct eddies left by swimming females and trap them for mating the dance of honey bees are usually performed in a dark uh dark area and attending workers monitor the dancer with their antenna similar signal vibrating may also pass through the honey bee comb substrate other arthropods attending substrate born vibrations include water striders and the fifth modality is the electrical discharge electrical discharges can also be used for signals two orders of freshwater fish the marmoriformes of africa and the gymnotiformes of the neotropics it is a nathonemus of commonly called as african electrical fish and gymnotus neotropical electrical fish both of them uh, they show nocturnal mode of life live in muddy water these fish create an electric field and uh, use distortions induced by nearby objects to navigate uh, navigate and find the food not surprising they also use the same electrical discharges to communicate with each other and coming to the signal transmission how they can transmit the signal otherwise how the senders transmit the signal to the receivers all animal signals degrade as they propagate between sender and receiver sound signals transmit efficiently over large distances around obstacles such as trees and foliage and dark environments nevertheless sounds of all frequencies become less intense as they radiate away from a source usually small animals can produce only high frequencies that is short wavelengths their sound communication is often limited to short distances propagation of sound is complicated when the sender and receiver are close to a boundary sound can travel to a receiver by two routes a direct route along the line connecting sender and receiver and an indirect route in which the sound bounces off the boundary and up to the receiver for terrestrial animals very low frequencies can propagate by third route called as a ground wave if the surface is sufficiently porous elephants which cannot fly or climb resort to sufficiently low frequencies that they can be detected several kilometers away 
whales also produce low frequencies and move sufficiently far beneath the ocean surface before vocalizing which enables their signals to be heard hundreds of kilometers away humpback whales communicate through low frequency sound waves forest birds typically produce long whistle like notes with slow if any modulations and coming to the next one is the visual communication how the transmission of signals takes place in the visual communication light signals also suffer transmission losses intervening obstacles such as foliage easily block the straight line propagation of visual signals and increasingly distant sender occupy the decreasing part of your receiver's visual field a reflected light signals require some source of ambient light and visual communication thus becomes more difficult to achieve at night and in very dark environments bioluminescence is of course one solution to this problem here it is a aquaria victoria commonly called as a crystal jelly or bioluminescent water jelly in the waters of the west coast of north america the species is harvested for its luminescent protein called as a aquarin aquarin used for the of uh, bioluminescence and coming to the olfactory signaling that differs from sound and light communication in significant ways pheromones spread from a source by diffusion and medium turbulence this process is much slower than the propagation of light or sound signals and its erratic path can make it difficult for a receiver to locate an odorant source birds use degradation of sound to estimate the distances to competitors signal degradation during propagation signal degradation during the propagation is not always a detriment many birds use degradation of songs to estimate the distance to competitors like this and as long as there is a sufficient degradation a territory owner can conclude that the other singers are too distant to be threatening many social insects use olfactory signals to mark feeding trails to give alarms or to identify colony mates to avoid confusion and focus attention on a specific location or individual it is best if these signals have only limited ranges of detection regardless of modality used senders communicating with the distant receivers face a number of competing influences body size habitat type time of day proximity to a surface and speed with which a receiver must respond all affect the form of the optimal signal because species differ in these factors optimal signals differ between species even when communicating the same information the constraints imposed by the physics of signal production and transmission account for an important fraction of the diversity seen in animal signals and coming to the signal reception the receiver's task is to detect signals against the background and to discriminate different signals most animals use the same sense organs eyes ears noses touch receptors etc for signals that they use to detect other external stimuli their brains also process all sensory stimuli both signals and non signals with similar procedures detection of sound is often challenging because the received signals are faint and distorted owing to propagation sound traveling in air is largely reflected from solid objects including animals with digital energy transfer sound traveling in water is easily transferred to aquatic animals but because of all parts of the animal vibrate in synchrony there is no immobile reference allowing the animal to detect the vibrations as a result animals have had to acquire some very sophisticated adaptations to hear the sound terrestrial animals often have funnel shaped structures outside the body to collect and concentrate impinging sounds 
the funnel shape also creates a gradual change in the properties of the sound propagating medium from that of air to that of liquid and solid bodies this increases the amount of trapped sound energy at the end of the funnel is a thin membrane called as the eardrum that is set into vibration by this sound small bones or fibers transfer the eardrum movements into a fluid filled cavity within which are sensory cells bearing hair like cilia as the fluid move the cilia sway thereby stimulating the attached nerve fibers nerve fibers larger animals have two ears and use the time delay or different signal amplitude at the two ears to identify the direction of the sender small animals cannot use the method because the delays and intensity differences are very small some aquatic animals have exterior cilia or hairs that sway as sounds pass over them and stimulate sensory cells this mechanism is effective only within a few wavelengths of the sound sound source and tends to tend to be limited to lower frequencies for sound reception at a greater distance from the source an aquatic animal must create body parts that are moved in different ways during the passage of sound waves some bony fish use swim bladder for this purpose animal eyes differ markedly in their range of view their resolution and their focusing power the eyes of vertebrates and cephalopods like the octopus and squid have adjustable lenses that extend the range over which images are in focus they also have an iris that adjusts the amount of light entering the eye light intensities are highly variable eyes may need different receptor cell types to handle both dim and bright light vertebrate eyes use cone receptor cells for bright light and color discrimination and color incentive rod receptors for dim light conditions all light receptors contain a protein bound pigment this pigment called as the rhodopsin occur in all multicellular animals these pigment molecules change shape when absorbing light this triggers a chain of reactions within the receptor cells ending in the production of nerve impulses different photopsins and rhodopsins absorb different light frequencies permitting receptors to differ in color sensitivity arthropods eyes consists of 8 to 10 receptor cells clustered around each of many facets or corneal lenses it is the number of facets not the number of receptor cells that determines the visual acuity in arthropod eyes the direction of visible sender is automatically known once a receiver has detected the signal the relative positions of receptor cells in an eye are preserved in their projections to the brain the recognition of patterns is a function of the brain and release on a combination of inherited and learned mechanisms pheromone reception is accomplished by smell or taste organs these receptors contain sensory cells these receptor contains sensory cells with fine cilia or microvilli that extended into the medium olfactory organs can be as simple as a patch in a mammalian breathing passage or as complex as the plumose antennae of male moths in some mammals they have omeronasal organ or jacobson's organs located in the roof of the mouth is used to mediate the behavioral response known as the flamen in which an animal raises its head and lifts its upper lip on reaction to specific odors this response requires special movements of the tongue and lips to admit chemical samples to the sensory cells the vomeronasal organ is the primary receptor of organ for many of the pheromones that dictate interactions in mammalian social life including pheromones involved in conflict reproduction and parental care electroreception appears to have been a widespread sensory ability in primitive fishes in which it was used to, to detect muscle and nerve impulses in hidden prey modern sharks and rays still use this technique for hunting 
marmiriform and gymnotiform electric fish develop these primitive receptors into sophisticated tuberous organs that are used in social communication these structures embedded in the fish's skin are encapsulated in ways that make them insensitive to slowly wearing electric fields such as those produced by muscles but responsive to the rapid discharge of other electric fish here we are observing hammer headed sharks that is spirna have electroreceptors sensitive structures using for hunting the prey and coming to the costs and benefits of the communication for both sender and receivers there are costs associated with engaging in communication it takes time energy and special modifications of sender and receiver organs to communicate the benefits to the sender may be direct such as securing a mate successfully repelling an opponent or indirect in that the receiver's choice may be benefit close kin of the sender a receiver attends to any source of information that is sufficiently reliable on average to enhance the receiver's decision making the qualifiers sufficiently reliable and on average reflect the fact that senders may not always send perfect information but the signals may still be useful to receivers animals often have to make decisions in response to alternatives for example if a female must determine which of two males will be the better partner for her young she will mate with the male she deems most fit when parent bird returns to its nest it must decide which of its nestlings is most needy it will then give that nestling the worm here we are looking the uh, parent robin decides which of its nestling needs the food most animals signaling systems have reliability is less than that expected for perfect information receivers usually have a best guess that they adopt when they cannot obtain enough information from a signal to make an informed choice and coming to the last one evolution of signals new signals do not evolve from scratch as with any adaptation new signals evolve from existing body structures organs physiological process and ordinary behaviors that animals already possess for non signaling functions these are sometimes called as the proto signals the sender's proto signals may have been initially poorly associated with the context of interest to the receiver and the receiver's reception or reception organ may not have been very effective at detecting the proto signal however once such precursors are in place each party can take advantage of the other and this can be sufficient to initiate subsequent coevolution of both signal generation and receptors and there are historical scenarios for signal evolution fall into two categories the first one scenarios emphasizing sender precursor were a major focus during the early days of ethology in the 1950s and 60s the austrian zoologist conard lorenz who founded the field of ethology noticed noticed that the courtship displays of many birds appear to be elaborated versions of simple preening movements feeding actions or nest building activities the second perspective called sensory drive emphasized receiver precursors for the evolution of signals and was developed during the 1980s and 90s uh spearheaded largely american biologists john endler in sensory drive signals were viewed as new behaviors or structures that exploit existing sensory biases of receivers with the new dna technology for generating accurate evolutionary trees scientists have been able to trace the histories of signals and receptors using one or both of these variations the proto signal often undergoes a reduction in the number of components and an exaggeration of the remaining components in a process called ritualization ritualization of visual signals often involves the addition of color 
elongated and erected fur, feathers and fins or enlarged body structures that enhance the visibility of the display. As a result of ritualization, artery signals may be shortened, repeated, modulated in various ways that make them distinct against a noisy background and chemical signals are enhanced with structures and behaviors that maximize order dissemination. The receiver organ may then be fine-tuned to make it specially sensitive to the critical signal components emphasized during ritualization. Here there is a, an Australian frilled lizard, Chlamydosaurus kingi, spreading out the skin around its neck to scare the enemies. Signals that evolve from cues via the sender precursor root are associated with a particular context or meaning from the outset. This evolutionary process is demonstrated by the predator alert signal of Thompson's gazelles or gazilla thompsoni. A gazelle that has heard a suspicious sound is likely to stop foraging, raise its head high and stare in the direction of the sound with ears pointed forward. Nearby individuals spotting the frozen head, high posture, gaze in the same direction and prepare to flee. The freeze reflex has become ritualized and amplified through the evolution of black and white stripes along the gazelle's face and body that make the staring posture more conspicuous. And here, a long-eared owl, ACO Otis, its feathers spread in an aggressive display. The contrast between aggressive and submissive signals is called as the principle of antithesis and was first noted by British naturalist Charles Darwin in the year 1872. Aggressive individuals that are fearful of their opponents may also perform displays of redirected aggressive attacks on nearby inanimate objects. Reminiscence of an angry person who slams a door instead of causing physical harm to the individual who is serving as the source of frustration. The form of vocal signal can also reveal information about the sender state. Vocalization associated with fear tend to be high frequency screams because the fearful individual reflexively tends all of its muscles. And come to the another example. Most examples of signal evolution via the receiver's precursor scenario involve mate attraction. Tropical anole lizards possess specialized motion detectors in their eyes for distinguishing the jerky motion of their insect prey against the uh, waving motion of the background foliage. The push-up displays of males that are used both to attract females and to repel other males mimic this jerky movement and thus ensure the visibility of the display. And Many nocturnal moth species have evolved specialized ears for detecting the high frequency calls of their bat predators. Mate attraction in these moth species is achieved with an olfactory signal usually given by the female. One group of moths has become diurnal and thus no longer suffers from the bat predation. Males in these species have taken advantage of the females auditory biases and this have evolved the ability to produce a high frequency sound to attract mates. And here there is a another example. Vervet monkeys found mostly throughout the South Africa as well as some of the eastern countries. These vervet monkeys have four confirmed predators such as leopard, eagles, pythons and baboons. The sighting of each predator elicits an acoustic distant alarm call. Infant monkeys give indiscriminate alarm calls but eventually learn to give the right call at the appropriate time. This is all about the evolution of the signals. So this is all, the, all these events, all these examples, they are clearly uh, giving an important information about the communication among the animals thank you thank you one and all for more videos 
Watch and subscribe my YouTube channel, Swami Zoology. Thank you.